Good morning guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. As promised yesterday, we'll be doing a video on the Milko today, but you know, to start, we have to go to Dunkin' Donuts. Last night was rough. Rough. I need a refund on my night. My children were up. <sighs> it's usually Roman, but both of them. Three o'clock, Roman was up. Oh, what the heck was that? It's not like, you know, my fr my my voice froze. <laughs> Rosen, Rosen, oh my goodness. Roman was up. Three o'clock, laughing, sounding like a tiger, banging. And I'm like, dude, it's 3 a.m. Okay, get him to sleep at four. Riley wakes up, all upset, wide awake, crying. Oh, guess who else is up? Roman is up until 5.45, 6 o'clock. And I was like, oh, why are you guys doing this to me? So I'm going to duck it. I'm getting a large. Uh, Jessica, thank you. Jessica sent me a uh, cash app coffee. <laughs> so thank you, Jessica. Whew. Let's go to Dunkin' Donuts, guys. Let's go to Dunkin' Donuts. I'm home now. So a little bit of a different topic. Um, my friend from high school, her name is Alexis. She um, just messaged me on Instagram and she would like to interview me for her Lex Talk Biz mini series on Instagram. So if you do not follow me on Instagram, um, it is Angela Jasmina with two A's at the end. And I will be doing a live interview this Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. I'll also link her Lex Talk Biz um, Instagram in the description. She helps mompreneurs brand their businesses. She's like a good coach for that. So if there's something you'd be interested in, go ahead and follow her on Instagram, you know, reach out to her. Her name is Alexis. Also, this is the Melco ENT 16X machine. And if you would like to purchase it, I do get credit um, if you purchase it from Todd at Melco. I'll put his contact information down below. A lot of you guys already know Todd is not a pushy salesman at all. He literally will just answer your questions and if you're done, he'll just say, okay, bye. Let me know if you would like to purchase one. He's not gonna blow up your phone, none of that. He's pretty cool. He's very nice. He makes some corny jokes. Sorry, Todd. <laughs> we'll get a discount if you purchase it and mention that you found them or you, you've heard of Melco from Andrew's videos on YouTube. They put together a package for my subscribers. So go ahead and reach out to Todd at Melco. Um, like I said, his information is down below. Back to work. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be making Riley, that's the only child that I have that could wear a shirt with this mermaid vinyl. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and make her another mermaid shirt. You guys already saw a mermaid shirt in yesterday's video, but I'm just going to make a mermaid the vinyl number four applique shirt um, with her name, of course, um, because I already did. Here's the mermaid vinyls. Ooh. So this is the lavender one, the aqua one, ooh, and the ooh hot pink. So I'm gonna be using this one because I already have samples made with the other two, and I need another. I need a sample of this one for my Etsy shop. So I'm gonna use this and make Riley a shirt. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and edit it. Um, the design I'll show you real quick. I'm just gonna flip the camera. I'm just gonna be making a number four shirt. Sorry, it's shaky. I don't have my tripod with me. So a number four, and I'm going to, this button centers it. So I'm gonna center it and move it up. Yeah, that worked. Center, move up. Okay, you want to play games. Okay, move up. There we go. So, I'm using that up arrow. Move it up. I'm probably going to make it bigger because that's pretty small. I used to make them about six inches long. Oh, um, now I have to center it again. And move it up. And I'm going to be doing this on the Melco. Um, if you're wondering why I still use Embrilliance, because I am used to Embrilliance. Um, and... I'm not 100% sure how to use the design shop software. You'll see me use it to edit the colors, but I really don't know how to use it. And that's when I had mentioned that I was thinking of, uh, what did I do? Okay. I was thinking of doing a live video with Melco so they could teach us all how to use design shop and um, how to digitize with it. So once we figure that out then yes i will probably be using design shop but for now i'm still using my brilliance software 
page. And I'll link the Brilliant software down below. This is in Brilliance Essential and I'm looking for a font somewhere. Okay, here, Riley. This is my new favorite font and I want it pink. Oh, I don't even know the pink color. And again, I'm gonna have to edit this on, what did I do? What the heck? That did not work. I'm gonna have to edit this again on the design shop software. Um, okay, let me center it. Okay, it's centered and then I'm going to move it down. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm just gonna move it because it's taking forever. So I line it up. Okay, and I also want the name to be the outline. I want it all pink. So it's gonna be like that. And then I'm gonna have to save it to a flash drive. So to save it, you'll do, oh, the file's gone. File, save such file as. And I save everything as a PES. The Melco does read PES files, um, but I don't have my flash drive with me. Save stitch file as for Riley. Sorry, trying to do this with uh, one hand is kind of hard and trying to hold the camera steady. So I'm gonna save it, then I'm gonna upload it to the Melco and we'll see how that works. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the Melco on. I think I'm gonna use this color. I'm deciding between these two. I think I'm just gonna use the hot pinks. 1597. All right, I'm gonna turn the milk on. Um, and always use canned air to blow out your machine before you use it and then oil it every day. All your machines, you should oil them before you use them every single day. So while that's turning on, let's see. Forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, so I did get a email from one of you guys last night. I don't know if you want me to mention your name, so I guess I won't. <laughs> But there was a question of what's the difference? A lot of people don't know the difference between a industrial commercial machine versus a home embroidery machine. People hear a lot that Brothers are home embroidery machines, but then the Melcos are more industrial commercial. So what does that mean? So first of all, if you could take a look at the machines, most industrial machines are metal and people, you know, they, they like the aesthetics of the other machines. Now, they're industrial machines and these are home machines. They're more plastic. Um, so I'm trying to think of like an easier way to explain this. So home embroidery machines are for a crafter, hobbyist, um, but you know, I've definitely run my business on them for a while. Now, commercial machines are more so, they're not meant to be run all day, every day. No, you can't, it, it, it wouldn't last as long if that makes sense. So an industrial machine, like the Mel Connors, other brands, like uh, I think Redline, I, I haven't used one, but oh, Tajima or those type of machines. If you think of, let's think of businesses. That's the easiest way to put this. So businesses, hats, um, polos on shirts, um, stuff that you're gonna be running all day, every day. You're doing multiple, multiple, and multiple of the same shirt all day, all day, all day, all day, all day. That's more so industrial, commercial. Now, I thought I would never need one of these machines because I'm like, well, I'm not doing hats. I'm not doing that type of stuff. I'm just doing applique. Now, I'm not just doing one, sh two shirts a day. I'm doing, let's say, 20, 30 shirts a day. And that's when I only had one machine, though. I was doing a lot. If you watched me back then, I was doing a lot of shirts. Um, on the one machine, but then you have <laughs> to take it in to get it service, service, service because you're using it so much. Um, so industrial machines, they're meant to last years on years on years. I know I'm in the For the Love of Melco group. I don't know if a lot of you guys are familiar with that. Um, it's a group with just Melco users. And there's people on there that have had their Melco 20 years, like forever. They've had their Melco forever and they, they last. Um, Brother machines, I'm not saying they don't last because they're they're very reliable machines. Um, it's more so a speed thing, if that makes sense. Um, a speed, precision. I don't know if I'm using the right words here. So um, that was another question they asked. So what's is is speed really a difference? Because they said, okay, what if I can only run my Melco, let's say 800, and the other machines go 800? No, no, no. 
Melco actually goes 100. These, I can have them programmed, like any of these, to 1,000, and they may be only going 500. But they say they're going 1,000, but they're going 100. Like, you will notice if you ever do an applique on these machines, they say, oh, it's going to take 36 minutes to, for runtime. An hour and, what, 10 minutes later, it's still not done. So it's because it slows down. The Melco machines, they have the auto feed, so it updates the tension as it sews. These do not update the tension as it sews. The tension you have is set as the tension it sews the whole time. This one will change the tension for the best stitch quality. If that makes sense. That's why this machine, it run, if it says it's running 800, it's running 800. Say it's going 1,000, it's going 1,000. It's not like these machines that say they can go up to 1,000, but it's, scheduled, it's put at 1,000. You set it to 1,000, but it's not going 1,000. It's going like 500 maybe 600 so i'll just putting that out there um i was thinking keen and i would thought thinking should we do like a a melco versus brother race to see which one does it faster and how much faster the melco is versus these machines i think that'd be a cool video let me know comment down below in the videos if you'd be interested in a video like that okay so the machine's on now so let's just go ahead and start um this oh my arm so let me flip the camera does anybody see my oil? Because I don't see my oil anywhere. Oh, found it. Always oil machine before use. Oil the machine before use. Sorry, I guess you didn't see me oil it. I oiled it right here. Choo. I sprayed it out first with canned air. And then I put the bobbin back in. Clicks in. You probably didn't see that either because I suck it holding the camera and recording okay so here is design shop which is their editing software it's like embroidery software editing software so digitizing software i'm gonna go ahead and open my full riley number two did it not save uh, there it is for riley two open and then i'm going to click on the hoop right here it's shows the current hoop obviously that's not the hoop i want so tools hoop setup i think it goes to that one by default and i'm gonna go to the mighty hoop eight by nine apply okay and then here we see that um it's obviously bigger than the hoop the dash line is the hoop limits so i'm gonna have to select it all and then resize it to make sure it's proportion i have to hold down the shift and drag it so i need to put you guys down for a minute Okay, so I resized it, and then I'm going to click center design, so it has centered it. Now over here are the colors that are in the design. So this is the name, Riley. This is the placement stitch, tack down stitch, satin border. That's what those are. So I need to change the colors. There's two ways to do this. Over here, I have already put in my most uh, used, it's pretty much the unicorn colors over here, so I can just click and then click here so you see how this one is selected right here is pink i change this oh 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 what did i click where's the mouse i don't like windows computers okay all right so it's selected here and then over here i'm gonna click on pink see it changed the name now to bubblegum pink because that's the madeira's name you see the two different colors now but that's not the color i want i want 1597 so in order to change the color to 1597 where is the mouse you can oh i hate how that's expanded here let me close move oh my goodness windows and computers suck okay so these are both going to be the same color the name and the satin border of the four so i'm going to control click Ooh, ooh. All right, so they're both selected. Um, and then I'm going to right click color, and right here I'm going to type in 1597, and it, see the whole color changed. And I'm going to click OK. So for these colors, these are just uh, tack down and placement stitches, so the colors of these don't really matter. So for these, I'm just going to go ahead and click a color over here that I normally use. You see it changed. This one. All right, just make sure they're different colors. Um, all right, close that. So now you see, oh, this one didn't change. Ugh, 
right click color 1997 it work okay oh my gosh this one says bubba got big uh color all right come on cool is it done okay less than print mint green light blue 1597 okay cool so we did it all right so now we're going to load it to the machine which is going to take it over to the Melco software. Now I'm gonna use the Melco simple interface, which is like, it's similar to like Brother Machines. It's easier to use versus their uh, advanced interface. Um, so yeah, let's just go over there, machine, load design. So it's been loaded to the machine. And this is how it popped up. It popped up like this because the other design I had in there had these colors. So to go fix the colors, to change them to be correct, I'm gonna click here. This takes you to your color sequence and we're gonna change all the colors. So step one is the name, so that's correct. I do need it to be number one. Step two is the placement stitch. So I just wanted any other color. Step three is the tack down stitch and step four, which is the final stitch is the uh, satin hot pink stitch. So that's these are the colors I need, the, uh, the order. So hot pink for the name, Riley. The placement stitch, this, that way you know where you're gonna be placing your fabric. So, and that's gonna be mint green. Like I said, these two colors don't matter, just don't make them hot pink because otherwise it'll just be one whole step. So you wanna make two different colors. Um, and you usually don't wanna make it black because black shows through everything. Um, so I just picked two colors. Um, so yeah, so what we're gonna do is, this is just the name and this is the placement stitch. So between here and here, you don't need to stop. You don't need it to stop for anything. So you could just have it do the name and go straight to doing the outline stitch. So I'm not gonna put a stop here, but between this step and this step, which is the tack down stitch, we need it to stop. Cause this is gonna stitch the outline of the four and say, hey, this is where you're gonna put the fabric. After it does that, you need to put the fabric. So we're gonna put in, this is what this means. This is an applique stop button. So you're gonna place it right here. So it's gonna stop between. It's like, hey, stop, this is the applique. So then right here is where we're gonna put the fabric down. You're gonna place the fabric on top and then it's gonna do the tack down stitch, which is gonna do the stitching on top of the fabric before you cut. So after it does the, the tack down stitch, then we need it to stop so that we can cut the fabric. So that's what that is. And then it's gonna do the final stitching. That is it, that is all. So we're gonna click, yay. All right, so these are, this shows you that this is a mighty hoop. That's what the magnets are for. This dash line is the hoop limit. So let's say, I'm gonna click right here. This lets you move up and down. So let's say it was like this. Whoop, it turned red, you saw that? That's telling you, you cannot embroider safely. That means a needle is probably gonna hit the mighty hoop and you're gonna break a needle or something bad on the machine. So I'm gonna recenter it and it turned back to a dash line. Now I like my shirts to be as high as they can be. Move, move. This is the slowest, oh, 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 move too high. Down, go down, go down, go down, go down. Go down. Oops. All right, that's fine. I'm gonna leave it like this. And I'm gonna click, okay. So it's safely in there. This, this is the active feed. For AJ Blanks, I use six. And active feed is just, it has to do with the tension and the thickness of the shirt. So I use six. This can go really high, but six is good for me. Between six and eight. Um, 900, this is the speed. As you can see, it says this shirt will take nine minutes and 50 seconds to stitch out. Um, if I increase the speed, you see the time goes down, but I usually do, I start with the name. So the name is going to be, let's say 900. Um, so that's what that is. And this is hoops. I think that's it. That is all we need to know. This is the total stitch number. Um, I think that's it. So I need to go ahead and hoop the shirt. Oh, if I click that, oops. Touch screen, Windows computers, boo. Okay, so let me go ahead and get the shirt hooped and set up. Okay, so I did get 
we were getting a question this morning in the Facebook group about stabilizers. So the milk cart, I usually use uh, cutaway stabilizer, not tailway, because it's so fast. It kind of messes up tailway. It doesn't work. And I know the rule is if you wear it, you don't tear it, you use cutaway. I hate cutaway because you can see it through the front of the shirt. I don't like that. Um, but with the Melco, it's so fast, it's kind of necessary. <laughs> so there is this stabilizer that I'm gonna try on the Melco today. I haven't tried it yet. So this is No Show Poly Mesh Stabilizer. Um, I got this off Amazon. Um, I'm gonna link it down below if it works. <laughs> So I'm gonna cut a piece of this, but then what I'm also gonna do is put a piece of tear away underneath of it. That way, um, it gives it more stability and then the tear away I can just rip off afterwards and just have this. Like this is so thin, but it's um, it's not tear away, it doesn't, it's just, it works. It's pretty cool. But every time I look at it, I think it's a roll of paper towels. I'm like, oh, this is not paper towels. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna cut a piece of this with some tijeras, I want this tijeras. If you guys learned one Spanish word from me, let it be tijeras. Scissors, okay. I'm gonna cut a piece. Okay, I got a piece cut. And then I also have a piece of tearaway. So the cutaway's gonna go first, and the tearaway after. That way when the shirt's done, you would just tear this off and then you'd be left with this. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so let me get the shirt. Riley is a size six. AJ Blanks, get him. <laughs> Gotta put my own promo in it. Okay, so here's the shirt. Let me move this away because it's a mighty hoop. Mighty hoops you need to keep away from computers because again, they're magnets. So. Here's the shirt. Here's the mighty hoop. The Melco mighty hoops have these brackets. The brothers' brackets are bigger. So I'm gonna put this in. And again, this is just for my child, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Put this in. I'm just gonna try this out. So I'm gonna hoop this one. I don't. I'm gonna float. That's what it's called. This one. We'll see how that works. If it doesn't work, hey, whatever. It's worth a try. At least you guys know not to do it. So let me be the the, uh, the test dummy here. Do, do, do. The experimentalist. It's not even a word, I don't think. Okay, so I'm trying to put this stabilizer in. And with, I keep seeing my own shadow, it's scary. And with stabilizer, you want to make sure it's hooped completely like it covers the whole hoop that gives you the most stability especially with the Melco because the Melco is so fast I was able to float my stabilizer before just because it, um, the brothers aren't fast I love my brother no no offense to it it's just not the Melco is just really fast so it doesn't have time to recover all right so stabilizer is in Okay, and then let me try to center it. And so this is just for Riley. It doesn't need to be perfect. She won't know it's crooked. <laughs> All right, so cool. That's what it looks like. And I always, it's like this, you can see the shirt is too loose. It's wrinkled, okay? So my rule is don't pull the stabilizer. I pull the shirt. So pull from the bottom, and then the side right here. Cause you'll see like little, you can't see it on camera, but there's like little waves you'll see. And then I do side and don't pull too hard and side and that's it. And now the wrinkles are gone. So I'm gonna put this on and I'm gonna put this like straight under on the Melco. Let's see, can you see the Melco from over here? You can see my thumb. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the Melco. And then, like I said, I'm gonna put this right under here on top, and that's it. See if this works. If it doesn't work, hey, it is what it is. It's just a test. It's just a test. All right. So let's flip the camera. The design. It's nine minutes fifty seconds. Here's the shirt. Make sure it's on there. And I'm gonna trace. 
Although it does say it's in the hoop limits, I always want to trace because I'm not trying to break anything. <laughs> so to trace, you push hoop and this button, the laser, and it traces. And it shows you how far it goes. It's hard to see, sorry. So it's perfect. So again, it's gonna use needle number uno to start. Um, and it's gonna do the name first. So, okay, the stabilizer is still there and we'll just go to start. This is the start button. You ready? You ready? You ready? Okay. stabilizer with this machine so I don't know what stitch quality it will look like I usually use cut away actually you see the blue the not blue wow the green coming up so as it goes, the green comes up. So there's the R. Ooh, the, on it. For the first time on my left, I'm too tall. Let's speed it up. Hopefully I don't mess something up by speeding up. This screen on my computer is touch screen, so it won't quite work on your computer, but I'm going to speed it up. Mermaid vinyl, it's kidscustomdesigns.com. Um, I will be getting more in the end of next week. Um, but so what it looks like the back is canvas. Uh, this one's actually cotton backing. Um, they're pretty thick. Um, and I know a lot of people want to see how it works on the Melco. Um, no heat and bond, it goes on just like this. So we're gonna put it on whenever it finishes stitching out. Right now. And now it's going up. To do the number and it's switching <laughs> the colors. Because remember, we changed the colors. I wanted to look at the name because I said I never used a stabilizer before. So it's not too bad. It's not horrible, but it's not as good as the cutaway. Um, you could tell like down here, but again, when I sell this shirt, yes, it looks fine to me. I would um, probably change some settings on the machine, um, the ActiFeed, but again, I was just trying this out. So now I need to cut this thread, it's bothering me. Hold on. Scissors, tijeras, okay, cut this, cool, gone, perfect, all right, so this is the mermaid vinyl, again, I'm just going to place it straight on, and make sure, okay, there's a lot of space on here, all right, 
Um, so a trick you can do is for the inside of the four, if you want, you can like cut a slit now or later. Um, I'll just do it later because let me just do it now. All right, let me cut a slit and then line it up. So I have it let go. So I need a slit about right here. So what I'm gonna do is bend it right there and then cut. So you see there's a, a little cut in it. So now you just put your scissors in here. It's hard to see, there it is. So you just put, you're just gonna line this up with the center of the four so that we, when we go to cut it, you just slide your scissors right in and cut and don't actually cut the shirt. So let me try to line that up. And, but let's give it a try. There's the cut and it needs to be right somewhere in here. So let's try it. It's upside down. No, it's not. That's the right way. Cool. All right. Let me try to line it up. So I want the slit inside the four. That's inside this little hole. Okay. All right, cool. So I'm just going to start it. Ready? Ready? I just remembered I have 65 nine needles in this machine. I don't know if it'll work for this <laughs> this vinyl. I might have to switch it to 7511, but we'll see how this works. All right, so you see, you see the slit right here? It worked out perfectly. All right, so now I'm just gonna cut this. These are my newer scissors. That's why I put the tape on them. So. Vinyl is harder to cut than fabric. Um, I actually have to cut this slower because it's like with fabric, you would know if you're like cutting through the shirt because it's thicker. <laughs> but this, it's harder to tell. So I'm just gonna cut it slowly. Sorry if my arm is in the way. Cut the shirt. Well, it's a raggedy shirt. She'd probably be like, no, mom. It's not acceptable. Okay, one side cut. And then this is what I meant why it's important to, it's easy to put the slit in here. You just literally slide and cut. Right, and then makes it easier versus trying to make a slit in it while it's on there because I'll tell you how many shirts I've ruined trying to do that. Okay. This is what we have. And we're just going to embroider it. Okay, so everything's back on, so we're just gonna click start. And hope the 65.9 needle survives with thick vinyl. 65.9 needle is usually for smaller things, like small lettering, leather, I don't know. Now, I usually would run this at like 1100 but <laughs> now that I have this small needle in I don't think I'm gonna do that and because it is thicker I do think I need to raise the acetate because it's leather it's a lot thicker than just the shirt Look at that sharp, clean edge. Oh my gosh. That was perfect. 
I'm trying not to change this needle right after this is done because this leather is thick. And this is the Melco EMT 16X. Look at them clean edges, wow. This is only stitching at moving it up to a thousand and seeing. I just hope the needle doesn't break because it's the leather. If you're wondering what that is, that's just Melco's grease they put into the machine. Isn't this vinyl so pretty? Oh, look. Thread break. So, thread break. Thread broke. Now. Hey, you guys can see me re-thread a needle. So, the thread broke. So... How it does it? It act automatically will back up ten steps on a thread break. It's automatic um, for the Melco, so I don't do that luckily. But I don't know if I can do this on camera with one hand. But this will go back through here. Oh, you can't see. Ugh. All right, hold on. Can I do this with one hand? Am I that skilled? All right. It'll go back through here, then I actually have to cut the end of this because that's not gonna get through. Can't even get it on camera, it's so thin. It's not gonna go through a needle hand because it is frayed. So, I'm gonna go back to 950 stitches per minute. Like I said, this is a 65.9 needle that I use for AJ Blanks, but I need to now remember, canvas thicker needle. Thicker needle or just slow down the speed. Um, all right, it went through. Sorry, you guys didn't see any of that. Thought you did, but sorry, guess you did. No, I tangled it. Gotta do it again. I made a knot. Let's try that again. It's not tangled it around the needle. Okay, let's see if I can get it on camera. I'm so far away, I can't see. There we go. That is it. That is all. And then I would normally, these will move that bar forward. Bar comes forward. Pull it back. Pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. One hand is hard to do anything. Uh, okay. And then push this back. 
And then I would just cut this thread. Thought I cut it. Can't tell if I cut it. All right. And then I'm gonna check the bobbin to see if the bobbin broke. Um, no, it didn't. So what I would do is just start it up again. Let's see. Oh, lower the speed. And there we go. Well, I should have gone back a little bit. You see that I missed those stitches. Oh, survival shirt. <laughs> done it's done so here's what it looks like let me get it off of the hoop but yeah didn't take long looks good oh sorry my whole finger's on here it looks good to me this is what it looks like i like it looks kind of rainbowy too depending on the light Ooh. all right so let's take it off the hoop okay and then um, what I was talking about with the stabilizer. This is what the back looks like. So this is the tearaway. This is why I wanted a tearaway on the bottom so I can literally just rip it off. Now I never rip between the words and the name because um, I don't like there to get that wrinkle there. So oh, don't rip. I usually leave it there. It's hard to do it the opposite way, but I'm just ripping it. So I ripped that off. And then this one, I will just cut as close as I can to the uh, stitching. Again, I don't cut right here. So let me do that. Okay, so it is cut. So that's what it looks like. And then we can, I guess this brand, let's just go ahead and do the whole shebang. We're gonna heat it. Oh, I didn't cut the thread <laughs> on the name. Cut, cut. Can't see me, but I'm just cutting the threads. like two seconds then I like to um, pull it out flatten it out whatever it's called just to make sure there's no wrinkles and then I get my tennis touch that's missing for some reason 
How are all my rolls of ten to touch the same? Where are they? Oh. Okay. So I can go ten attach. And then cover it. And then take this. It's 300 degrees. I do between 5 and 10 seconds. I do 10. So you guys can see how the uh, vinyl stands up. Okay. So then just turn it back out. Oh, wow. oh, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. Okay, I was saying <laughs> this is what it looks like, and I said that I had used a 65.9 needle um, for embroidery vinyl. I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea. I think 75.11 would have been better, but hey, that's what I have on my Melco. So, whew, I love the look of this vinyl. So, this is what the shirt looks like for Riley. I'm sure she'll be happy to get another shirt. <laughs> another shirt. Okay, so if you guys have any questions at all, you know, feel free to leave them down below. This was the embroidery vinyl. Um, and I guess a question I do get a lot is, what's the difference between embroidery vinyl and heat transfer vinyl? So this right here is heat transfer vinyl. The back gets adhered to the shirt using a heat press or some sort of heat component. Embroidery vinyl has a cotton backing or a canvas backing. So this does not adhere to the shirt like these do, if that makes sense. Um, that's the biggest difference. These you can, uh, you just adhere to anything with, with heat. This has to be sewn on again, embroidery vinyl. It's, I guess I could say like a piece of leather. Um, it's not just going to stick to a shirt. It needs to be adhered by some form of sewing or something like that. That's the biggest difference. This is for embroidery and this is just normal vinyl. You can use it for like on a Cricut, um, I embroidered with it as well. So it's, it's literally just personal preference. Um, people also ask if I'm still using heat transfer vinyl. Yes, of course I still use heat transfer vinyl. Almost all of my designs that I've used so far have only been with heat transfer vinyl. I'm just now getting into embroidery vinyl, so everything I'll be adding to my shop, well, not everything. Some things I'll be adding to my shop will now feature these. And this is actually gonna get photographed right now and get put up on my Etsy shop at some point today, if not today, tomorrow as another shirt option. Like I said, it's a super cute, quick uh, shirt to make. I think, what was it like, 10 minutes on the Melco? 10, 12 minutes maybe? So, hey, the, in an hour, how many can you make? Um, well, on the Melco, I don't know how long it'll take on the other machines, but if you would like to see a video of me making two shirts, the same shirts on the Melcos, let me know. Or not the Melco, the Melcos. The Melco and the Brothers, so we could do like a time and set them both at maybe a thousand. So we can see the actual time difference between the two. I think that'd be a cool video. But let me know down below if you guys would like to do that. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know. People like my videos. They like my content. And they'd like to see more. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.